Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to NOAA Day. Thank you for joining me on my presentation about the NOAA Commissioned Officer Corps. My name is Lieutenant Junior Grade Chelsea Parrish, and I am an officer in the NOAA Corps. My current position is the Cetacean Photogrammetry Specialist, and I work at the Southwest Fisheries Science Center in La Jolla, California. I wanted to start out with a little bit of information about me and my educational background. I am a double alumnus of the illustrious Savannah State University, a historically black college or university, otherwise known as the University by the Sea. I obtained both my bachelor's in biology and my master's in marine science from this school. For those of you who follow football, our claim to fame is Shannon Sharp, a tight end who played in the NFL for the Broncos and the Ravens. During my time in graduate school, I found out about the NOAA Corps while attending the NOAA Educational Partnership Program biannual conference held at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. From there, it was a done deal. I had my eyes set on joining the NOAA Corps and seeking a rather interesting and rewarding career. And that was how I ended up at the Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut in July of 2016 as part of the Basic Officer Training Class 128 Officer Candidate School 1-17 for over 17 weeks. For those that don't know, the NOAA Corps was founded in 1917, although our history dates back to 1807 during Thomas Jefferson's time as president. We are considered one out of the eight uniformed services within the nation, with the recent inclusion of the United States Space Force. Currently, we are authorized to carry a strength of 321 commissioned officers within our Corps. For comparison, the U.S. Navy has almost 55,000 officers and the Coast Guard has around 6,700 officers serving within their branches. We serve and support NOAA's missions on the sea, on land, and in the air in regards to scientific missions while also promoting environmental stewardship. Most officers help take command of NOAA's fleet of research and survey vessels, various aircraft, and amongst NOAA's various line offices, such as fisheries, the National Weather Service, and the Office of Atmospheric Research, just to name a few. The NOAA Corps requires all applicants to be a U.S. citizen, obtain a bachelor's degree with some relation to NOAA's scientific missions, and have taken multiple college classes in science, math, and engineering. Once you have applied and once you were selected, all applicants will attend BOTSE. It is the basic officer training class, as I previously mentioned. It is held at the Coast Guard Academy in an integrated style of training with a duration of 17 plus weeks at the Academy where we eventually graduate and receive our commission. And then we continue on for an additional two weeks of NOAA specific training consisting of courses like ship handling, bridge resource management, and a graduation cruise on one of NOAA's vessels. Class sizes tend to range from 10 to 16 officer candidates two times a year. Although we currently have a NOAA Corps Reauthorization Act trying to receive approval on the Hill to increase our strength in numbers. Typical classes taken at BOTSE include navigation, ship handling principles, basic seamanship, safety and survival techniques, marine firefighting and damage control tactics, military etiquette, leadership training, radar, ARPA, and ECTUS, which are various tools used for navigation on the ship's bridge, small boat handling, and ship simulations. We even get to experience sailing aboard the Coast Guard's tall ship, Coast Guard Cutter Eagle, where we learn various techniques, such as calculating local apparent noon and estimating our exact position using a sextant, which can be seen in the bottom picture. We even set sails according to winds and weather, and we build more and more camaraderie through a two-week cruise as we rotate throughout our duties. Where we could be shining brass, we can be making dinner in the galley, we can also be washing dishes. Every single job we do helps us build teamwork. NOAA currently has 15 ships that are active within 10 home ports throughout the United States. We have just also received an approval to build two new oceanographic ships, the Oceanographer to be home ported to Honolulu and the Discoverer with a to be determined home port location, which is a nod to our past NOAA ships that have supported our missions. Our various classes of ships include fisheries, oceanographic and hydrographic ships conduct conducting various research across the globe. 
As you can see here, we have the Marine Operations Center Pacific in Newport, Oregon, where various ships on the West Coast and other surrounding islands are part of Mock Pacific. The Marine Operations Center Atlantic is in Norfolk, Virginia, and contains all of the ships on the East Coast and the Gulf of Mexico. My first assignment was NOAA Ship Oregon II, stationed in Pascagoula, Mississippi, and supported the Southeast Fisheries Science Center and various fisheries research. While aboard this ship from December 2016 to January 2019, I spent 362 days at sea, traveled over 50,000 nautical miles where we casted over 1,400 CTDs, we trawled 754 times and towed 609 plankton nets consisting of bongos and Newston tows. We deployed 549 long lines and collected 212 hours of size scan sonar footage mapping the ocean floor. Some of the duties that I did while I was aboard NOAA Ship Oregon 2 was as I, I was a shipboard driver. I stood watch for eight hours a day, four hours at a time. I was able to assist the scientists and help them tag sharks and pull in trawl nets and look at all the various plankton that we collected. I was also able to be a NOAA, NOAA scuba diver where I inspected the ship's propeller and the bow thruster, which are the systems that make the ship go forward and backward and move. And I also was witness to some of the best sunsets in the Gulf of Mexico. Oregon II conducted an annual sea map spring plankton survey and has done so for over 40 years until 2020. They wanted to assess the occurrence, abundance, and geographical distribution of the early life stages of spring spawning fishes like the bluefin tuna within the Gulf of Mexico. In addition, this was part of the Southeast Area Monitoring Assessment Program in support of annual stock assessments where we used bongos, newstons, shallow bongos, and mock nest nets, as well as CTDs to help determine the water profile at the time of sampling. During the summer and fall, we conducted groundfish surveys sampling the northern Gulf of Mexico using trawl gear to determine the distribution abundance of benthic fauna, population size structures, and transmitted real-time shrimp biological data weekly to the Gulf States Marine Fisheries Commission in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. This helped determine when various shrimping seasons for pink, white, and brown shrimp could open along the Texas coast and surrounding waters. Here is just an example of the diversity amongst catches from a Florida trawl to a Texas trawl from left to right. A 40-foot trawl net was towed for 30 minutes at a speed of two and a half knots per station, collecting all the various fishes. And as you can see, the fish here pictured are actually bycatch because what we were actually looking for were populations of white, brown, and pink shrimp. Next, we conducted an annual shark red snapper bottom longline survey, which was my absolute favorite survey to drive the ship. Here, we sampled waters from the Atlantic Ocean, starting all the way up at Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, and moving down south to Cape Canaveral, Florida. We also sampled the northern Gulf of Mexico from east to west across the Gulf. We are looking for the distribution and abundance of shark and red snapper populations to aid in stock assessments. We collected morphological measurements and biological samples to facilitate life history studies. And sometimes we even got lucky and we caught sharks like the thresher and gulpo shark, as pictured here in the top right hand side and the left hand side. Here is a graphic that a former NOAA teacher at sea aboard NOAA ship Oregon II drafted for one of his journal entries. He was a high school teacher and thought it would be a cool way to display to the students how longline operations are carried out via this graphic. Now I bring to you my current position at the Southwest Fishery Science Center as the Cetacean Photogrammetry Specialist working under the Marine Mammal and Turtle Division. I operated as an uncrewed aerial systems pilot, which is a UAS pilot, and have carried out UAS operations in Carmel, California, monitoring the southbound migrations of gray whales as they head to their birthing grounds in Baja, California, using our newly acquired fixed wing hybrid drone. I have acted as a visual observer and a designated photographer for the north northbound migration of gray whales at Piedras Blancas, Blancas Light Station. And I've also collaborated with the Alaska Fisheries Science Center in Cook, Alaska, re researching beluga whales, as seen in the right-hand picture. 
Here are just a couple pictures showing where we worked in Cook Inlet in places like Kinnick and Turnigan Arm, Chickaloon Bay, and fighting with 30-foot tidal ranges as we look for belugas, as seen in the left-hand picture. Beluga whales in the middle picture on the top are white in nature, and we're still just trying to look for mothers and calves, because calves appear as little gray, gray balls, and they're the most adorable and cutest little whale I've ever seen. We've trained with our equipment managers who developed the drones. You can see a picture of me in, at NOAA Day last year at the Aquarium of the Pacific, where I had my own booth set up. But also, I get to respond to whale strandings, and I get to collect biological samples from these dead whales in order to pr promote our research and figure out why they may have died. But lastly, I wanted to talk about where I'll be moving to next. In February of 2022, I will be moving to the NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer in Newport, Rhode Island as the operations officer. I am certainly excited for this opportunity because I get to be a part of a great group of scientists and ship drivers because they get to de deploy remotely operated vehicles, the ROV is pictured in the right hand side, down to the bottom of the ocean where they explore new shipwrecks, new biological life, new sea creatures, new animals, and they also get to identify things that we've already known. And we get to do that while live streaming. So this ship is a big public affairs ship. Everything is live streamed. It's all available on their website. And scientists from all over the world get to help contribute to what we are discovering via the ROV. And that is why I love my career so much in the NOAA Corps. There are so many opportunities. I get to go from being a firefighter to a scuba diver, to driving ships, to flying drones, to operating ROVs. Everything in this career is the most rewarding career I could have ever thought of to do. And it makes me proud that I get to serve NOAA and the nation in this capacity. Thank you for joining in on my talk. I hope you learned something new today and happy NOAA day.